Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about everything new here in macOS Ventura 13. So, this was just released about a week ago. I'm kind of a little late getting around to the video. Things have just been so busy, but I always love macOS releases. So let's go ahead and go over everything new here. So first off, let's talk about the system requirements. So these are kind of interesting this time around. So if you have an older Mac that's older than 2017, well, you're not going to be able to download and install Ventura. So here are the Macs that are compatible. So iMac, iMac Pro, MacBook Pro, and MacBook if you have a 2017 and later. MacBook Air 2018 and later. Mac Pro 2019 and later. Mac Mini 2018 and later. And then a new Mac Studio. So yeah, basically if your computer is older than 2017, you're not going to be able to download and install this, which is kind of a bummer because my computer is a MacBook Air 2018, which means next year I'm going to have to buy a new Mac because I can't download the software anymore. So yeah, it did not last as long as I was hoping for uh, this computer. That's one thing I like about Macs. My last MacBook Pro was a 2011 model and I used it all the way until I got this 2018 MacBook Air. So that means my MacBook Air is only gonna last me five years, which I guess is pretty good, uh, but I just kinda wish it would last a little bit longer. I mean, this thing's in great condition. It's been taken good care of, and yeah, it would just be nice if it would last a little bit longer. But yeah, so those are the system requirements for Ventura. So let's go ahead and jump into some new uh, things here. So first things first, uh, that's really interesting is your system settings. Yes, that's right. System settings. So it's no longer called system preferences. I'm not sure why they changed the name. Uh, it kind of would have been nice to say settings like you do on iOS, but in different categories over here on the left hand side, you have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and network up top like you do on your phone, as well as your um, Apple ID. And if you had any family sharing stuff, it would be up there as well. From what I can tell, these are mostly in the order of iOS. So it's pretty nice. It's kind of a familiar uh, feeling there. And if you go into each one of these, you're going to notice that there are some different changes and things that they have in there. Uh, so there's even more categories, for example, under general. And you can click on those and go into those each uh, settings. You have an appearance section now. So... So they have a general section where you can change your different colors and dark modes and all that kind of stuff. Accessibility is right there. There's a lot of new accessibility features, which I guess we can talk about those. Several new accessibility features in uh, Ventura. I know there's like new on-screen captions and uh, different things like that. There's also background noises that can be played, so that's pretty nice stuff. Uh, but yeah, system settings is quite different. Uh, looks a lot different. Uh, one thing that's kind of cool now as well is if you go into your wallpapers you can see instead of having the two separate windows that would pop up if you had multiple displays now you just have them both up here so you can click on those and change your wallpaper also they're keeping around the older wallpapers from previous releases so now you'll be able to just download those as you please so if I want this one for example I can click on it and then click download and it'll be able to be used in the future. Also, you can auto-rotate through colors as well as other slideshows now. But yeah, that's basically system settings. It's just this more similar look to your phone, and I think it's kind of easier to kind of find some of the main things that you need when you need them. So that is pretty cool to see that. Also, there are a couple new applications that we have on the Mac for the first time. So, we take a look right here, we notice we have a weather and a clock app. So, the weather app and clock app are basically how they are on iOS. You know, they're very familiar looking, just adjusted obviously for the Mac screen. So, if you go into the weather app, you'll be able to see all your weather information just like you would your hourly forecast your 10 day your radar all that kind of stuff so that is uh, pretty nice to see that here on the mac works as expected of course and then the other new app is the clock app so 
we can go ahead and take a look at the clock app so you still have your world clock your stopwatch your alarms and your timers so that is pretty nice as well to see there is an all new about this mac pane so if you go into about this mac you can see that now we have just this kind of simplified window here that tells you what model computer you have your processor graphics etc and what version of mac os that you have and then if you click on the more info button here now what happens is it takes you to general and in your displays and all that and then at the bottom you can see you can access your system report and then you can also access storage and display settings. Stage Manager is also here on the Mac now so if you have any Mac that can run Ventura I believe you will have the ability to use Stage Manager. So Stage Manager is kind of a thing that's going to allow you to organize your windows um, in different kind of ways here. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up a couple apps. Let's open up the Clock app, uh, the Home app, and we'll just open VirtualBox. You know, just a couple apps here to take a look at. So once these uh, get opened up, I'll show you how the Stage Manager works. So if you have a lot of stuff kind of cluttered on your screen, well, this will allow you to kind of uh, reorganize it. So Stage Manager can be activated by clicking Control Center and then you can see Stage Manager. So if I click on that, you notice what happens is the window that was up front stays here right up front on my desktop, but my other two windows have been moved over to the left hand side. So this is kind of an easier way to access those windows instead of going down to the dock. So if I need to jump back to my clock real quick, it'll take me right back there, or maybe I need to go to the home map or back to VirtualBox. So you can see that it's pretty quick uh, when it comes to switching between apps. You can also minimize all the apps and kind of have them over there to the left hand side or you can create kind of virtual desktops with this as well. So let's say I wanted these two on one screen but I still wanted my home map to be alone on a separate screen. So you can see I can do that as well uh, just like that. Now we do still have virtual desktop ability. You can see up there in the top right, you still have that ability to use that. But this is kind of a nicer way, I think. And once you get used to using it and the controls and how to organize your windows, I think it'll be uh, pretty handy stuff. And of course, as soon as you turn off Stage Manager, all your windows will just jump right back onto one screen there for you. But, as you can see also, it remembers what you had previously set. So, that is pretty nice. So that is Stage Manager in macOS Ventura. Since we have the Home app open, we can take a look at it. It has been redesigned, just like it has been on your iPad and iPhone. So, a very similar look and feel. You now have uh, Matter support in here, so that's a new Home connectivity standard. And you can kind of just see your uh, different rooms much easier, your speakers and all that good stuff. I don't have a ton of home accessories as you can see, but it is a better app and it's a nice way to organize it. You can also go into home settings now right here and you can actually scroll down to software updates and you can see your individual um, things. So I have a HomePod, you can see that they're up to date, you can even go into each device and see when it was updated and what it was updated so that is much nicer to manage your software updates in the home app. Game Center's also got a new design I showed you that on the iPad on the Mac you find your Game Center in your App Store so that is pretty interesting. We head into Safari I can't really show you much going on here but you do have your tab groups now so if you were to make tab groups that's not new, but you can now share those tab groups uh, with others and change the backgrounds on them and manage them, so that's pretty nice. Also in Safari we now have live text, so if your computer supports it you can highlight something, right click, and you can do translate, so that's pretty cool. This also works with pictures, so um, if it recognizes a picture, see if I can find one 
on here. Maybe this one will work. Nah, it's not really working as intended, but you can highlight text on photos as well, and it should um, figure that out for you. So that is some new things here in Safari. There's also passkey support now, and Apple claims that Safari is the fastest web browser in the world with this update. So there you go. If you use Safari, you now have the fastest browser ever. If you use FaceTime a lot, well, you'll be happy to know that you can now hand it off to your Mac and hand it off from your Mac to your phone or other devices. So if you place a FaceTime call on your iPhone and you are near your Mac, there'll be a new icon that will appear up here in your menu bar and that will allow you to click on that and hit switch and it'll bring it over to your Mac. It also works vice versa if you're on your Mac you want to switch to another device if you've got that device you can open it and you can actually I believe it gives you a new notification that says move FaceTime call so you can do that as well something else that will improve your FaceTime call quality but also other apps as well like Zoom for example or even QuickTime Player any app that uses your Max webcam well, you now have the ability to use the continuity camera, which basically means you can use a supported iPhone, I believe it has to be an iPhone 11 or later, to use this feature, but you can now use your phone as your webcam. So we all know MacBooks have garbage webcams. <laughs> Apple's kind of fixing that a little bit slowly. But for example, my 2018 MacBook Air webcam is garbage. I mean, it's literal garbage. It's like 720p it's fuzzy the microphone's terrible so now you can use your iPhone instead so let's go ahead and do a quick little demo of that okay so as you can see we're on QuickTime player and I'm recording this with iPod touch but trust me the camera quality is bad it's a MacBook Air 2018 cameras terrible microphones terrible but this is all you have to do to activate the continuity camera so believe you have to have an iPhone 11 or later for this to work but all you have to do is in whatever app you're in just find where you can choose which camera and microphone you want to use so on QuickTime Player it's right there you just click on it you can see we have the option for my iPhone camera and my iPhone microphone so if you just click on that watch what happens So your phone makes this little chime noise and now it is connected. So my phone's over here laying face down. Pick it up. And as you can see, there is the camera. Now it does like this kind of, you know, thing where it doesn't have a screen. And then it says connected to my Mac. So there you go. So now you can use this iPhone as your FaceTime camera. So that's pretty cool. So it's cool that you don't have to have it exactly like on top of the Mac. You can just have it near it on a tripod. I could have it all the way over there on a tripod. So that's pretty cool stuff. And again, you can select whether or not to use the microphone as well. So yeah, this is a great way to improve your camera quality on a FaceTime call or something like that. So that's a little demo of the continuity camera. Also, I'm just going to set the phone back down over here. Uh, well, I'll set it like right there. You see that you can at least see something. Uh, but if you go up here in the top right with control center, if your phone supports different video effects, so I have a 13 Pro, so you can actually use center stage, portrait, and studio light. There's also a new desk view feature so it'll allow you to kind of map out your desk area and project that onto the FaceTime call or the QuickTime movie or whatever you're doing so that is a little demo of the continuity camera and then if you want to disconnect it you can just go right here select FaceTime camera and it goes back to normal so that's pretty cool now, if you actually disconnect it on your phone screen with hitting that disconnect button, what will happen is it will completely forget that phone. So 
If you want to use that phone's camera again, you have to connect it via a cable to your Mac so it can kind of trust that device again. A little weird, but that's just how it does it. But yeah, that's a demo of continuity camera. A few other things here to talk about. There's going to be that new Freeform application that will be coming soon. This is basically a collaboration kind of app that you'll be able to use. It kind of reminds me of a giant whiteboard where everybody can scribble their ideas and different things like that. So you'll be able to use that on your Mac or iPad later this year whenever that decides to come out. And then the other things have to do really with iOS making it the same kind of way. So we have things like the shared photo library. We have the ability to unsend and edit text messages. We can schedule emails to be sent. We can remind us to check on emails and different things like that. And then a couple other Mac specific things to talk about is Spotlight. So Spotlight has been improved even more. You can now search for many different things and it's a better kind of search experience and results. And then really the last thing to talk about would be Siri. So Siri has gotten a redesign on the Mac just like she just did on tvOS. So one thing that kind of bugs me though is Siri <laughs> appears in the top right instead of the bottom right like on every other device. So yeah it appears like that and then once you actually uh, search for something it will appear the results a little bit different so we can search for this for example what is the score of the Eagles game the Eagles beat the Texans by a score of 29 to 17 last Thursday so you can see that you get a lot more information on different things you ask so we even have stats and stuff like that so yeah different design for Siri so that is pretty nice and guys that is basically it for macOS Ventura 13 uh, a lot of good features here but again most features are just kind of making it similar more to iOS and iPad OS which is not a bad thing but anyways guys that's all I got for you today I appreciate you watching the channel and I will catch you all in the next video